So this is part two, and this is a picture of the house before I primed it, just so you remember what it looked like. No. Project is going on, and I am going to give this a quick little sand and start taking off. I know I shouldn't be if I'm going to start painting trims and stuff like that, but um, I just don't like having all of these things all over the place. But So I've painted this, primed it. It's still a little bit teal here and there, but... I think that it's enough that it's sealed in the acrylic and that hopefully these tints will not affect the paints that I got. And these are what my friend gave me. She is redoing her cabinets and she's very fussy about colors and I love how how much energy she's putting into getting the right colors for her cabinets. And so she ordered a lot of samples from this company, which is um, a company that specializes in creating colors that are of... Uh, historic significance so they're basically made uh, his colors that they have been used in on historic houses that they have replicated for people who are restoring old homes and this is the main color it's called Hague blue and I'm gonna paint the whole house this color it's very dark but look how nice it looks with the with the stained roof and, and the decking just beautiful and they complement each other very nicely and then there's this highlight color which is almost like an olive green. It's called, um, whoops, it's called card room green. Um, and it's stunning. And I just created this little colorway because I wanted cool grave colors, but also with warm hints. So this one is tallow and it's a soft white. And I'm going to use that probably, um, definitely on the trim. And then this one is a warmer version of white, which is called Pharaoh's cream. And I haven't figured out where I'm going to put these colors, all, all, all these colors yet, but I'm definitely working on um, figuring that out. But this is definitely going to be the main color of the house. Um, so I'm going to give this a little bit of a look over and see what needs to be sanded down, but I think I'm going to start painting. I, I was worried that the prime paint, primer paint would um, make droplets and stuff, but it seems to have dried quite nicely. So I'm going to just go ahead and start painting. And we're off. I don't know why I take masking off. Sometimes it's not very smart when it comes to doing these things, but there's a reason why I end up touching up a million times. But that's just my process. There's people who like the preparation. I don't. I like the process of just doing, and then I can fix all my mistakes later. And the beauty of working with this house paint is that it's not super bulky. Um, craft paints can be, especially craft acrylics. They can be like super heavy and blo blotchy and blobby. But house paints aren't, so I can do as many coats as I want, and it will not get globby. So if I have to do touch-ups, and I guarantee you I will, it's going to look nice. So right now, the first coat is looking a little sparse. It's looking a little teal and a little streaky, but don't worry. It's going to become quite beautiful. In fact, it's I'm not quite done with the house yet, but so far, I am already astounded. The before and after, it's, uh, it's just mind-blowing. So you can already see how the blue is getting darker. I am crazy about this blue, by the way. I kind of wish I could paint my whole property this color of all both of our, our house and my little shed and um, my husband's little garage. Um, that would be amazing. Look how beautiful this blue is. It's just really super striking. It's got so much depth. And as you can see, I'm, I'm like knocking paint around and I've got it on the trim. All that's just going to get painted over. And I may have to do it several times because, you know, I know when I put the trim on, I'm going to get trim paint on the main paint and it's just the way it's going to be. I might do some masking for my final coats and stuff, but we'll see. So now I've just decided to let the blue dry a little more before I put on a final coat and do the final touch-ups. And I'm working on the um, pool room, I think it was, game room green or pool room green. It's so pretty. So I'm just winging it about where these paints are going to go. Um, I'm definitely using the Painted Ladies, um, Victorian Painted Ladies, as 
inspiration and just kind of throwing colors around. And they all complement each other so well. And I love these earthy sort of, I don't know, natural tones. They're not like industrial looking. They're quite beautiful. And this is the brighter yellowy cream color. And I am doing the corbels and some of the trim and some little highlights on the windows. I mean, it's just a few values darker than the um, white that I have. So it's going to be very subtle, uh, a subtle difference between these two whites, but I think it'll be really pretty and elegant. So again, I'm like a lot of mistakes here and there, which are going to get touched up. So got to make sure I'm trying to be careful with the details. The older I get, my ability to be precise is getting worse, but it's still going to come out pretty. I'm still trying to figure if I like the color on that, that color on the gables, but that's the great thing is I can just paint right over. This paint is very expensive, um, but my friend Monica got just tons of different samples of all of their colors on their chip. Um, they had like a little brochure with all the chip colors on there and she got so many it was difficult to pick, <coughs> excuse me, um, which colors I wanted to do. But the only blue she had was this Hague blue and I just fell in love with it right away. And now I'm working with the lighter, lighter color, lighter white. And I'm just zipping around, painting the trim, going along the bottom here. It's hard to see because I, I don't have a tripod. I have one of those little camera army stretchy things. And yes, I am punching in some of the windows. Um, I intend to replace the windows, um, the glass, the glazing, and I'm going to do some of my Cricut stained glass work and stuff to make it look a little more intricate. So I'm not like fighting to keep the windows as they are. The The transom windows, I'm still on the fence of whether I'm going to keep those or not. Some of those seem pretty firmly attached and they have pin hinges that are made out of the actual window wood. So I don't know how I would remove them to replace the glazing. So it might be a bigger project than I really want to deal with, but we'll see. I'm just mumbling. So I'm getting towards the end of this here because I, I haven't finished yet. So I, I had to stop um, today because it was just a lot. But so far, this is where I am. I'm trying to clean up some lines, get some of that uh, very light white cream color, clean up some of the, uh, the trim, make more stuff that I need to touch up later. <laughs> just my process. I make things harder for myself. But so far it's already so much better. And it looks real as far as I'm concerned. I mean anybody with who knows Victorian painted ladies would know that they can paint them so beautifully with all these beautiful different colors. I love these accurate colors, period accurate colors. And there you go. This is what it is so far. It's so pretty. I love that blue. Is that blue not stunning? So on to part three, I suppose. <laughs>